Hello, and welcome back to Gay Chill Crafts. My name is Sarah. And I'm Rick. And today we're going to be talking about our latest homebrew, which is a porter. Mm -hmm. And we've called it the Harry Porter. <laughs> Rick and his clever names. <laughs> I like it. Thanks. So, cheers. As you can see, it's a very dark, rich porter with a really lovely head. Of course, some of that comes because we do have a kegging system, mm -hmm. but you can achieve that as well. And one of the nice things about this recipe is some of the ingredients help that happen. Oh, okay, cool. Well, let's have a sip and then we can talk about the recipe. <laughs> Twist my arm. Okay. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Mm. Mm. Toasty nose. Chocolatey as well. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, I really like this beer. <laughs> it's a very good beer. I'm concentrating because I'm trying to think of exact flavor notes. We've been watching a, um, a different podcast called How to Drink. Um, he does not focus on beer. He focuses on cocktails. There's always extensive and rather humorous tasting notes as he's drinking the things that he makes. And so now I'm just thinking of that. <laughs> yeah, we'll link to them in the below in the, mm -hmm. in the notes because Greg really is wonderful as far as his cocktail recipes and tasting notes are concerned. Fun yeah. for everybody. Yeah, and he's uh, he's, um, he's not pretentious about it. Anyway, sorry to de derail the conversation, but that's what made me think about this. So I would say nutty, creamy, chocolate, a little bit of coffee. Mm. It's sweet, but it has enough bitter to balance out the right. rest of the flavors, but it's not overly astringent or um, mouth dry, or, dry yeah. mouth puckery, yeah, that kind of thing, which you can get. So right. I'm sure you'll talk about why that is, but yeah. Well, let's jump right into that. So okay. normally, or many uh, porter recipes and some stout recipes or darker recipes or darker beers will use a malt that's called a black patent malt. Mm -hmm. And black patent has some very bitter, very astringent, very mouth puckering, uh, and usually only in little bits. But I'm just not a fan of it at all. Mm -hmm. And I didn't also want to buy a pound or whatever the minimum I was going to have to buy for this recipe when it was only going to call for eight ounces or so in order to give it that color. Mm -hmm. So I had some midnight wheat that I used in our bracket. Okay. And I just decided to swap out the black patent for this midnight wheat, and it's I'm pleased with it. it mm -hmm. I think it came out well. It got the lovely reddish, kind of dark color mm -hmm. associated with yeah. a. Um, when I look through it, it has more of that reddish hue. It may be yeah. hard to show it on camera. True, it's at the bottom of the glass if that shows up at all. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of a reddish brown hue. And it doesn't take much from the malts in order to get that. So this recipe, which... To get the color, you mean. Correct, exactly. Yeah. So the right. color, the dark color, does not need a lot of dark malts. Uh, most of this huge, like 99%, well, probably about 89 or 90% of the grain bill is just pale two-row, which is a you know, what we use in our IPAs and other things as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then it just has just a little bit, like I said, about eight ounces of the midnight wheat to mm -hmm. give it that color. Cool. And does the wheat help with the head retention as well? Exactly. You poured these a few minutes ago. Mine's starting to fizz down, but it still has a nice nice lacing and nice foamy head in the in the top of the glass. And yours has even more. So yeah. Sarah's right. The wheat does help with head retention and there's flaked oats in this which gives it a little bit of a richer body as well as some of the, the the, uh, the head that you're seeing there. Okay, yeah. It definitely gives it a creamy mouth feel too. This is almost, I would say it's almost verging on the stout style, but it's definitely still in the porter yeah. flavor profile to my palate. It's very close to being mm -hmm. right, be straddling the edge between a porter and a stout, mm -hmm. but I'm going to call it a porter. Okay. It's your beer if you can call it whatever you want. <laughs> well, what, what else is in this? <laughs> well, we mentioned the flaked oats. We mentioned the two-row pale. And we mentioned the midnight wheat. Mm -hmm. The other is what's called Belgian Special B, um, and there's not a lot of that either, but it gives it kind of that caramel brown sugar, mm -hmm. which is where that sweetness, and it complements the chocolate malt, which is the other uh, malt that's in there as well. So there, mm -hmm. there's two-row chocolate malt, uh, the midnight wheat, and the flaked oats, mm -hmm. and the Special B. So there's really very little in that. So rare, yeah, exactly. Very little in that. In this, it's a very simple grain bill. I think it's mm -hmm. actually a great beer for novices to mm -hmm. do. There's okay. only two hops in it. Mm -hmm. That's Centennial and Willamette. 
there's and it's not a lot there so you're getting a little bitterness but very little bitterness it's not like mm -hmm. a hot forward ipa right and i can't tell my palate's not developed enough to know whether the bitterness i'm getting is more from wheat which to me can have a little bit of a sharp bite to it mm -hmm. um versus the bittering hop um so tell us a little bit more about the hops. When did you put things in? Sure. So the Centennial hop is the main bittering hop, and that is about 10% alpha acid, mm -hmm. AU, whatever it might be measured in. Um, and that's for the whole 60 minutes of the boil. So mm -hmm. the earlier in the kettle, the more bitterness that you're going to be getting from the hops that you use. Okay. Um, and so this is a Centennial 60 minutes. Then the rest of it is a half ounce of Willamette, I think at 20 minutes, and then another half, the other half ounce of that uh, hot packet at five minutes. So at that point, you're getting some of the aroma, a little bit of the bitterness, but most of the aroma that we're getting here is coming from the malts. Uh, you're getting that mm -hmm. chocolate malt and then the nuttiness that comes from that as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that's that's the, the most of the, the, uh, the profile. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And the, and the flavor, too, not yes. just the aroma, right? The, Correct. The, the taste of the hops, Which too. Is, yeah, exactly. But mostly it's from the malts. The hops mm -hmm. are in there. They add a little bit of bitterness, but it's not overwhelming the lovely flavors that you're getting from the malts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. It's really well balanced. It's very drinkable. Um, if you like anything in vaguely in the port, uh, I'm sorry, the porter, I wanted to say port, uh, <laughs> in the porter to stout range, but you don't want a really heavy beer, um, this is a great, just kind of winter time, you know, doing chores around the house or just having with dinner or whatever kind of beer to me. And it's funny you said port because I actually did it almost as a boiler maker the other night. I had oh, a little okay. thing of port on the side <laughs> with this beer and they complement each other quite well. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. The only other ingredient in here is the yeast that we used and that is a London ale yeast. Uh, that I believe is uh, based on the Whitbread brand from England. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that just kind of gives it more of an English style, which is what the porter is. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely has a, a English um, yeast character, which mm -hmm. is nice because I, I find those tend not to be very, you know, overpoweringly flavorful or very pronounced in terms of like, Hi, this is the yeast profile, and I'm gonna dance around on your palate and dominate everything. Um, like a lot of like you know Belgian yeasts and other kinds of yeasts can really kind of completely change the character of the beer. And I I prefer um, to taste things like the malt and the hops well, with most styles. I think. Okay, fair enough. I'm about to say because, and that's that's true. In fact, oftentimes I will brew with what's mm -hmm. called a USO5 Safale. And it's very, it's just a yeast. It doesn't really impart a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of use that in things to where we really want the malts or the adjuncts or whatever they may be to, mm -hmm. uh, to shine. For example, when we did our strawberry milkshake. Right. I didn't want the yeast to hide the strawberries or anything like that. So I just used a yeast that mm -hmm. was just going to ferment out the sugars, mm -hmm. but leave the, the profile of the ingredients behind. Mm -hmm. So, and this does add a little bit of character. I would say maybe a little bready or something like that, sure. um, toasted bread, something yeah. like that. Yeah. But but it's just very slight. It's it's again at the end. a dominant flavor. Yeah. yeah, very much at the end of, yep. uh, of your pull. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. mm. no, it's very good beer. And thank you. So we have the entire recipe is available on the website. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and click through. It'll be in the notes below. And it has the step-by-step -step as well as all the ingredients. And if you brew it, please let us know. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Or if you are brewing something similar and you like it, we'd love to hear about it. So mm -hmm. link to that as well. Yep. Uh, you can tag us on social media with hashtag Gage Hill Crafts or um, do an ad Gage Hill Crafts. We're on Facebook as well. So you can find us there also. So, yep. And where you happen to be posting about your, your brew experiences or what you're doing. If you try this recipe or any of our recipes, um, feel free to let us know. Yes. Until then, enjoy the mm -hmm. fruits of your labor. Yes, indeed. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>